hi, this is Tiffany. Is this Dina? Hi. Yes, it is. Um, I, I think I, I dialed the wrong number first. <laughs> you okay. did. I saw it pop up on my cell phone, and I was just about to go to break and give you a call back, but you called the live number, so we're all good. How are you? Oh, okay. I'm excellent. How about yourself? I'm good. I'm good. Let me do the official introduction. Uh, ladies and okay. gentlemen, we are so excited thrilled and honored i don't even have enough adjectives to mention how excited we are to welcome our guest this evening she is an actress she is a singer she is an author she is a radio show host she is a licensed pilot and she is the daughter of the one and only mr dean martin we are so excited to welcome miss dina martin to the show you're on the air with terry and tiffany welcome dina well thank you very much thanks for having me on tonight this is great I think the big word that comes to mind is, is loving your father the way we have. We visited his grave several times, by the way. I mean, it's always been an emotional thing for us. We are so proud of you. We are so proud that, that you love your dad. You continue the, the swing and jazz and lounge and American Songbook uh, legacy. You're, you're so talented. Everything you do is so smooth. And I know Dean up in heaven is so proud of you, too. Oh, my gosh. Thank you for saying I just got chills. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. You know, I was uh, you know, uh, very blessed and unbelievable to have Dean Martin as my dad. Yeah. He was the coolest ever and so sweet and kind. And, and you know, I mean, I'm just, you know, I grew up with the, the greatest. But, you know, I had Uncle Frank Sinatra, <laughs> Uncle Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> okay. And, you know, all my, you know, fabulous brothers and sisters. And it was just, uh, you know, pretty amazing. And, uh, you know, so everything, it's all in my book, Memories Are Made of This, Dean right. Martin Through His Daughter's Eyes. But, you know, I just respected him so much, and I, I just can't believe that the amount of work that he accomplished through his life is just, you know, astounding to me. Right. Now, I, yeah. have, I had read a quote online, Dina, that had said that when you're asked, and maybe you can expand on this a little bit, when you're asked if Dean was a good father, you kind of chuckle and you say, no, but he was a great man. What do you, what do you mean by that? Oh, okay. Well, you know what now, and some people don't don't understand. You know, I really don't know how he got through and did everything that he did. He was a great dad. Mm -hmm. When I think about a father, you know, when you know he wouldn't take, you know, he didn't sit down and do my homework with me. Right. He didn't pick me up, you know, and take me to, you know, my piano lesson, or you know, those things that you know all the dads are doing, you know, now. I mean, it's it's changed. Right. But he was there for us, you know, and he was so much fun. And, you know, he really didn't have, you know, when I think about everything that he did, as I say, all of the, you know, the recordings, the uh, the nightclub acts, the movies, uh, it's it just spectacular. How he made all of that work, you know, for all of us. And, but, you know, he would be home every night, you know, for dinner. Mm -hmm. I could hear him walk in the back door, <laughs> 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 you know, and, you know, all seven kids, you know, my mom, and it was just, you know, dinner was... Uh, was really quite something. He was very, very funny. But everybody wanted to come over to our house because it was it was a fun place to be. Imagine, you know, seven kids, and if each one of us had a you know a friend over, you got you know fourteen people. <laughs> so, no. Yeah, and you know, but I was I was very very lucky, and you know we had a as I say we had a I went to live with him when I was nine years old, mm -hmm. and you know with my with my sisters, and it was just. It was amazing to have, you know, I had three other, uh, let me see, I had Gina and Ricky and Dino. Those were my, uh, you know, half half brothers and sisters, but mm -hmm. we were just one big, you know, happy family. And it was, uh, you know, it's a lot to go through, but right. people can read it. Did you read the book? We have not read the book yet, no, but oh, I, I well, want to get a, I want to get an autographed copy from you. Well, I will, we will send that to you. If you'll send me your address after, after the, you know, send me an email. And I'll get the address, and I'll autograph it for you. Okay. It's really, really good. Now, we uh, heard we yeah. heard that the book is being made into a movie. We also heard that playing you would be Jennifer Love Hewitt. Yes, well, that's what we had, we had planned on. This was a few years ago, and then all of this, you know, crazy uh, world shutting down. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> those, things, those things happen. But, uh, you know, Joe Montaigne, who was one of my favorite favorite friends yeah and you know i mean he's just he in fact he played my dad in the uh, i guess it was a tv movie it was the uh i'm trying to remember what the name of it was but he was so respectful and so fabulous and we became you know really really fast friends and when the book came out 
he said he called me he said Dina I have to direct the film he yeah. said I have to be I have to be there and I said well, do you want to uh, you want to be in the movie he said no no I want to direct it he said uh, because it was such a a touching it's such a touching poignant book and it's it's so true and it's about you know when you grow up you know it's about everybody it's not just about being you know Dean Martin's daughter right. All people are the all the same. You know, we go through things in our life. You go through, uh, you know, births and deaths and marriages and divorces and and things. You know, things happen uh, in in your life. And I wanted people to see. It's you know, it's the same for uh, for me. It's the same for uh, uh, the world. And this book is not just for Dean Martin fans or you know or or my fans. It's something about you know growing up in in life. Right. Mm-hmm. And I have had when I would do book signings and people. And still to this day, of course, when they come up and they say, Dina, maybe it's a 70-year-old man. He said, Dina, I just loved your book. I couldn't put it down. It was so so touching. And he said, you know, it kind of changed my life. And then a you know, 14-year-old girl will come up and say, I just loved your book. It's so fantastic. And so it was you know, great for everybody all ages. And it speaks to so many people. And the fact that Jerry Lewis wrote the foreword yeah. was just I know. You know, spe- I know. What what an you know, incredible I, thing yeah. for all of us that, that loved Martin and Lewis so much to know that you remain close friends with Jerry up until the end. Yes, yes, and he was he was my uh, my buddy, you know, my pally, mm-hmm. and he would call he would call us and you know make sure everything was all right, and he you know talk to my handsome husband John, and he'd say, "Are you taking care of her?" John would say, <laughs> "Oh yes," because you know, <laughs> I'm going to come over there. <laughs> you know, I mean, just uh, just amazing. And, you know, when I was writing the book, I called him. I said, you know, Uncle Jerry, I, I've got to come and talk to you. We have to sit down and because I am writing the book. He said, well, you know, come. So I went to San Diego, you know, at that beautiful boat there called the Samantha. And John and I went on, and we're down on the, on the dock, and I hear, lady. <laughs> and I look up, and there's Jerry, and, you know, in those shorts. He loves to right, wear those yeah. shorts. Right. So he, you know, he has great legs. <laughs> <laughs> he <has> great legs. <laughs> you know. And he came over and he hugged me. And he put his hands on, you know, on either side of my face, and he looked. We had tears in his eyes. He said, "I see my partner." Yeah. And uh, you know, it was just, it was just uh, amazing for me. And so then, you know, we went in, we sat down, and we talked. You know, all day he told me, you know, fabulous, you know, stories. And he said, "You know, Dina, I'm writing a book about your dad." Uh, also, I said, "Really?" He said, "Yes." He said, "Are you ready?" It's called Dean and Me, a love story. Yeah. I said, I don't know, it's kind of creepy. <laughs> <laughs> In a way, but if you think about it, they, they really did love each other, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's true. I mean, you know, and they just, and Jerry idolized my dad, and my dad just, you know, you know, got such a kick out of Jerry. Because, you know, uh, Jerry was the one who, he always wanted to, he wanted to take care of everything, all the business, you know. Yeah. He, he he'd made sure that you know this was right, and you know, and writing things, and you know, getting uh, dad there, and then he wanted to make sure that the, you know, that he invented the video assist camera. Mm. I did not. Unbel- really? You know, Jerry, um, wow. unbelievable. So he would direct and produce, and you know, I'm sure, he, and he would, uh, you know, if he could, he would have done the catering and the, you know, I mean, everything. <laughs> that's how he was. And my dad, he just wanted to show up, and uh, you know, he didn't want to rehearse. And so, you know, and I'll get into his TV show later. But he would just show up and, and sing, and they were just unbelievable together. Yeah, I, I heard the, the rumor, and I can believe it, about how laid back Dean was compared to Jerry, that, that yeah. when that movie, that cheap B movie came out, uh, Bela Lugosi meets a Brooklyn Gorilla, Sammy Petrillo and the other guy did your, your dad and your Uncle Jerry. And, and I guess Jerry was pissed. <laughs> and, and Dean was, hey, it's okay, it's cool, it's, all right, it's all right, Pally, and had to calm Jerry down. I totally believe that. Oh yeah. Well, you know what? It's it's funny about my dad. You know, it's uh, uh, you're not, you know, it. Even, you know, if there's some jerk who's in a restaurant and says something, you know, Dad, my dad, you know, could care less. Yeah. You know, that's fine. You know, uh, you know, my darling Uncle Frank, he'd probably want to get up and uh, <laughs> not be happy with something like that. <laughs> But, you know, my dad couldn't be bothered with yeah. uh, with those things. He was he concentrated on what he did. You know that beautiful, beautiful voice of his. And you know, I mean, he was so funny. I remember watching him. Uh, you know, when I was nine years old at the Sands Hotel, the first time in the Copa Room, mm-hmm. and we're sitting there, you know, ringside, and all of a sudden you hear, 
Ladies and gentlemen, the Sands Hotel is proud to present the star of our show, direct from the bar, Dean Martin. <laughs> <laughs> and then he'd walk out, and the you know, and people next to me they go, "Oh, there he is!" Yeah. And I was just, "Oh my God, there he is!" And he had on the tuxedo, and the red pocket square, and he was funny, and he sang beautifully. He, you know, he was just so at ease. And I said, "You know what? I've I've got to do that." And you do. Do well, you do. Wanted, you totally are. I wanted to ask because you know when when somebody when somebody's father is a legend like yours in the entertainment mm-hmm. industry, how did Dean feel about you? I mean, it wasn't just you, you, uh, your brother Dino. I mean, many of you got into singing and got into the business. Was Dean okay with that? Was he worried about his little babies going into the the mean world of entertainment? Well, you know what, you know, what's interesting, because he was, you know, he was so smart, you know, and I think, you know, he was just, and he said, you know, Dina, and he said, you know, it's a business, you know, and you'll, you'll go out, and you'll, you know, you'll read for a part or something, you may not get it, it's a business, don't take it personally, mm-hmm. but he said, always be on time, know your lines, you know, show up, and, uh, and just like what he said, he said, don't be a jerk, mm-hmm. you know, I want people to like you. And he says, I'm not picking up the phone to call Lou Wasserman and say, put my daughter in a movie. Right. He says, you go out there and you read for it. Or you go out there and you audition. And so he was proud of us. But he was, you know, he said always, you know, please be on time, be early, and just know what you're, you're doing. And uh, it really, it served me well. So I ended up, you know, learning a lot of things. And, you know, and I was lucky enough to have piano lessons and, you know, tap lessons, ballet lessons, and... You know, to grow up around, as I say, you know, Uncle Frank, Uncle Sammy, uh, you know, have Peggy Lee come over, Rosemary Clooney, you know, for Christmas Eve and and sing with Mm -hmm. these incredible people. So I learned, I learned from the very best. You know, I was always in my head wondering what was in Dean Martin's uh, cocktail glass. Now I have to wonder every Friday on Facebook, <laughs> what's in oh your my, glass? Is, is that a really sippy, my little sippy poo? Yes. <laughs> is it real or is it for TV? It. Well, I can't. I can't say that. No, you probably <laughs> can't. First, you know, here, you know. First of all, who in their right mind would drink before they're doing a show? You exactly. Know, I mean, that, yeah. You know. I mean that. You. Know, I've seen. I've seen people do that, and I just get totally embarrassed. You know, because yeah. when you're up there and you're. You have to remember all the lyrics to the songs. You have to remember the jokes. You have to you have to know what you're doing, and so and for me, you know, it's my uh, it's my little sippy poo, right. and I have people all over the world. It's unbelievable that I'm number five in Polestar wow. for live streaming, you know, in the world. And you've got and it perfected. You see a lot of people do this, and there's glitches. It's so glitch free. It's just it's smooth. Oh well, we, well, you know, I as you know, my dad taught me just you know you. You, you make a mistake, just go on. You'll know, laugh about it and go on and, you know, and fix it. You know, there's no editing. Yeah. Right, this. right. It's, it's live. It's, it's right there. And I've got a, you know, a good team. I've got, you know, my handsome husband, John. You know, he's doing all the music. I don't know how he gets all that together. And then Rosario, who is, you know, making sure that all the things are going right. Yeah, she's and awesome. She is awesome. Yeah. And then we have all those comments coming in, and people are requesting songs. And, uh, in fact, I think Gail, somebody... Gail Ornsby asked me to do uh, the Days of Wine and Roses. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So today I called Rick Creevy, you know, over in Boca Raton, my musical director. I said, I want to do the Days of Wine and Roses. You know, this woman requested it. He said, okay, so we figure out a key. Now he'll send me, uh, you know, a piano track tomorrow, and I'll sing to her. I'll go, uh, you know, okay, maybe it's, uh, maybe you have to raise it a half step. Mm-hmm. Then he'll do it. And I'll say, okay, maybe we need some background vocals, and he'll do that. So it's a lot of work to put on this show once a week and I think you know yesterday what's today today's Saturday today's Saturday yeah yeah, yeah so uh, Saturday you know that was the 62nd consecutive week right wow. you know 62nd show and so it's been a lot of work and it's uh, you know it takes a, a lot of time in fact John and I we just finished figuring out what songs we're going to do for uh, this coming Friday and get some jokes and you know and, and plan it out so it's uh Really quite a lot of work. Well, now, for those that, that don't know, I just want to let everyone know, if you've been living under a rock and you're not aware, uh, Dina's <laughs> show, Dina Martin Live, is on every Friday uh, at 4 p.m. Eastern, which is 1 p.m. Pacific on the West Coast. And you can catch it on dinamartin.com, would probably be the best place. Or YouTube. Or you can see it on YouTube, and you can also see it uh, live streaming on Facebook. So Right, check out. exactly. And uh, so it's just, it's, it just took off, and it's been so amazing for people. 
because, you know, we wanted to do it. What happened was over a year ago, well, 62 weeks ago, actually, um, I had two sold-out shows at Herb Alpert's up in uh, in Bel Air, you know, in, in Beverly Hills mm-hmm. at, at Vibrato. And they canceled it, of course, you know, the like the day before. I said, oh, my gosh, what are we going to do about all the people who were coming? And so Rosario said, well, you know what? Why don't you do a Facebook Live show? I said, what's that? <laughs> so, well, go down, you know, cause, you know I, I have my little studio here where I rehearse, right. down in the, you know, where that, uh, that green couch is. And so we went down and I, uh, we did it. And we thought maybe, you know, we sent some emails to the people who were coming to the show. And we thought, you know, so, you know, a few hundred people will be watching. We were dumbfounded that, you know, after that show, uh, there was like 54,000 people who had wow. watched it. I went, what? And so then the next, and it just got, you know, bigger and bigger and bigger. And I think yesterday's show, it's uh, close to 300,000 people watch it from all over the world. And I think it was the show before you did Beyond the Sea, one of my favorites. I love that song. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you know what? All these, all of these songs, I love Beyond the Sea. Yes. And in fact, I think uh, it was last week I did Beyond the Sea Tisket, you know, Uh uh, combined. And which is, you know, fantastic. Well, I love Bobby Darren. Kidding me. And the story the of, of you doing the twist in the living room with your brother Dino from Dino, oh, uh, <laughs> D- Dino, Desi, yeah. and Billy, of course. And, and oh, I yeah. love that story. It, it, it was great, you know. And, and to sit there and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, you know, that, that's what we did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we had the, you know, the jukebox playing "Up the Lazy River" by Bobby Darren, and there's Marilyn Monroe sitting with a scarf on her head. <laughs> and, yeah. so, and we're doing the twist. I know. Pretty, uh, pretty remarkable uh, things that. Uh, you know what I've what I've done in in my life, and it was you know so great when I know that you know when I watch Dad and the, you know the movies and I I don't understand why he wasn't nominated for a, you know, best supporting actor for uh, Rio Bravo yeah or you know I mean he was amazing in Airport or you know some came running. Yeah, the did thing you is, like you know, his uh, serious movies more than his comedies? Well, you know what? No, you know I just lo- well I love the comedies. You know, and then the you know the Matt Helms were hysterical. Oh, of course, oh, yes. I love so much. Yes. Absolutely I have, hysterical. I, I have to tell you, Dina, I had heard I had heard a rumor, and I wouldn't be surprised if it was true. But uh, we're big fans of the Matt Helm movies, and the the last one had Sharon Tate in it, and then she was supposed to come back for another one, and then everything that happened happened, and I yeah. had read that Dean said, "No, I'm not gonna. No, we're not gonna do more," because she. Because of what happened with her, because they got along so back. well. In the, in they had great chemistry, yeah. you know. And she was beautiful. What a, a lovely lady! And also, also uh, Marilyn Monroe. I think they were doing uh, something's got to give together. Yeah. And the uh, the producers, I think they wanted to, uh, you know, uh, get rid of Marilyn. He said no. Mm. He says, "Come on, he says, you know, she's uh, she's a pal, and we're going to we're going to do that." But you know, it's pretty amazing uh, Hollywood and everything that goes on there. And my dad was true blue, a loyal friend, you know, to everyone. And he knew what was uh, right and wrong. And he said, Dina, you know, I love, I love working. And the reason why I work is, you know, to take care of all you kids and play golf. That's right. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I've got to ask now that the big thing for me was when Dean and Jerry got back together on the telethon. But uh-huh. Jerry had said later that there was many other reunions people didn't know about. They had gotten together more than on the telethon at one time. Well, you know what, I'm trying to, you know, I mean, that, I was kind of blown away. I was, uh, I think I was living in New York, and of course, we always watched the MDA Telethon, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, from day one. You know, they started it together. Right. And yes. it, when you're going back, you know, all those years, and I have a fabulous uh, photo of them on the first uh, Telethon. And so I'm sitting there, and I'm watching it, you know, because it was so much fun to watch them. They come out in their tuxedos, and then, you know, the tote board, and everybody's, you know, sending in the money. And then by, you know, 2 o'clock in the morning, the ties are undone, you know, and, <laughs> yes. and, you know, and they're still, you know, they got the tote board. And so I always ro- watched it, even after, you know, when they broke up, because my dad didn't want to, you know, talk to Jerry. That was it. You know, my dad was so, he was easy. He never, you know, got mad or anything like that. That's not who he was. Uh, my dad was very calm and, and cool and collected. But when he had it up to here, he had it up to here. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And then that's over, you know. So no no craziness. So he didn't didn't want to watch it anymore. But I, uh, of course, did. And I uh, called him, and I, I loved him. And, you know, when we went over there, we stayed, we stayed in touch with each other, you know, through the years, which was amazing. And I couldn't believe when I saw my dad walk out 
when Frank Sinatra said, you know, we have a friend who loves what you do here. So you and didn't, you didn't know it was going to happen? You, you no, didn't. no one knew. <laughs> no one knew, okay. And in fact, no, none of us knew. They didn't tell us it was supposed to be. It was top secret. <laughs> and I see my dad walk. I said, oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah, I fell off him. the couch. Well. <laughs> yeah, you know, because you, yeah, you, know, you could see. I could tell the way he, he would walk. Yeah. You know, just amazing. And he walks in there, and, you know, Jerry, and they said that great line. You know, because Dad had the number one, you know, TV show or something right. had been right. for 10 years. And Jerry says, so you've been working? <laughs> 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 uh, you know, so it was uh, it was great. And then you were but on the telethon, too, and sang with Jerry. Yes. Yeah, time yes, after time, I believe. Time. Yeah. And, you know, it was, um, you know, when Jerry said, uh, when we were on the boat, and he played one of the uh, songs, I think Vinnie Falcone was playing the piano, and it was time after time. And and I'm listening. Oh my God, I love that song. You know, written by Sammy Kahn. And so I started to sing with him because Jerry had recorded that, or he had, you know, he was singing along with it. And so I started singing with him and you know harmonizing with. Mm -hmm. He said, Dina. He said, Why don't we do this on the telethon? Oh. I said, Oh well, that would be great. So we got to the uh, to the telethon, and he had you know all the photos and things, and he announced it as. Uh, Martin and Lewis together again. I know. Isn't that great? Wow. Oh, it was just great. Yeah. It was just great. And then, so, of course, uh, you, I believe your your debut singing on television was on your dad's variety show. We saw that clip. It was wonderful. Oh, thank you. Yes. You know, I, I had on the blue dress and my hair yes. was up on the side. Yeah, that was my prom dress. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, you know, I could tell you looking at Dean that, that there was so much respect there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know he was so cool, and people could, you know, come out. He could sing with anybody. Yeah. And as I say, you know, he wouldn't. Uh, he didn't go to the rehearsals. He just he didn't want to uh, do that. And so during the week, when everybody would go to the set down at NBC to the studios, his music director, uh, oh gosh, Lee Hale, wore a little sign on his chest that said Dean. <laughs> so he was the one who stood in. You know, he was the stand-in for right. for my dad for the whole week, and he would sing. You know, with uh, Ella Fitzgerald, Peggy Lee, the Mills Brothers, dance with Sid Charisse, mm -hmm. do all the skits with people. And on Sunday, after he played golf, my dad would come in there about 1 o'clock, wow. run through the songs, you know, with the Les Brown <coughs> Band of Renown, and then go into his, uh, you know, studio and look at the cue cards. And he was unbelievable that he could come in on the, the day of, uh, of the show and be brilliant, absolutely brilliant and cool. And he could sing with anyone he made everybody comfortable so pretty remarkable well, you know Dean when I think about it said something to you about it wasn't so bad or being nervous or whatever was there a conversation about you were scared before you went on or oh yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and he said, oh, yeah. that was so cute he said okay and I think he told the audience he said don't you look because you don't want to you know frighten my my little girl oh, right. <laughs> yeah wow. you know he was very sweet and I was nervous and that was my uh I think it was my second recording. I think that was Lee Hale. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering if I did Baby, I See You. I'm, I'm trying to think of that. And Glenn Campbell was the mm -hmm. one who he was, played guitar on my uh, my first records. So it was it was pretty spectacular. But yeah. to be there on the Dean Martin show and you know knowing that it's uh, it was mm -hmm. a little scary, but yeah. he made me feel great. Well, fast forward uh, a couple of years, we'll say, and Dina now has five of her own albums. I wanted to ask you about the latest album, Swing Street. You, am I right in understanding that you actually went back and recorded at Capitol Records in Studio A? Oh yes, and a, a lot of the um, a lot of the musicians had played with my dad. Wow! And you know, and so it was. Patrick Williams was, you know, conducting, and he wrote a lot of my arrangements. He was just, you know, spectacular. And to to be there, you know, I had recorded at Capitol also, you know, at other times, but to, to be there and to be able to record this with all these fantastic musicians, and, of course, I had my Rick Creevy, he came to, to Capitol. But I remember the first time going when I went to Capitol Records is when my... My dad was recording Memories Are Made of This, and I went with my mom, mm -hmm. and walking down the aisle, the you know, to uh, walking down the hall that leads to Studio A, looking at all the photographs on the wall, Bobby Darren, Nat King Cole, Judy Garland, you know, the Beach Boys, and walking down there, were the Beach Boys there yet? Oh, whatever. And, you know, Dean Martin and Frank Sinatra, and going into the Studio A and seeing all the musicians sitting there, and my dad standing up at the microphone, mm. And he had three uh, backup singers, the Easy Riders, 
and I sat down, you know, my mom hugged me, and he recorded Memories Are Made of This. And those, the three, uh, the three backup singers, you know, it was a sweet, sweet, the memories you gave to me. And it became his first number one hit. Incredible. Wow. And it was, that's why I named the book Memories Are Made of This, Dean mm-hmm. Martin Through His Daughter's Eyes. And, you know, uh, going back there and singing Memories Are Made of This and all of that. And I do that in my show. I get people out of the audience. I ask for volunteers to come up and be Dina's divas. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> and sing, sweet, sweet, the memories you gave to me. So uh, it was r- really remarkable to be to be there, using the you know the microphone that my dad did, and you know I'm standing next to Nat King Cole's piano. Wow! So it was really quite uh, quite something. And you know you kind of had your rock and roll thing going too, because were you not on an episode of The Monkees? I was on yes with uh, the <laughs> It Boy, yeah, Davy Jones. <laughs> and, and you guys dated. I heard her. Yes, yes, we did, and it was a <laughs> lot of fun. He had such a great sense of humor. Oh yeah, and he was he was a good singer. He was a you know he was funny. You know, my dad adored him, oh. and so we had a, we had a lot of fun. And and in fact, I was playing the Whiskey a Go Go on Sunset, and uh, he came, and it was cute. Uh, but yes, yeah, so that was when well, I was rock and roll, and you know it wasn't until after my dad passed away. On Christmas, you know, imagine yeah. that, you know, on mm, Christmas. Yeah, we know. And, yeah, I know. And, you know, so I, I started, you know, listen, listening to his music again. You know, I mean, I was always listening to it, but then, you know, because I just, I wanted to hear his voice. You know, yeah. I just missed him so much. And I'm going, you know what? I think I should be doing some of this music. And that's when we decided to put my, uh, I did a, a tour in, in Florida uh, doing all the, you know, the songs. You know, Memories Are Made of This, you know, Valare, Time After, you know, all the... Right all the the great Dean Martin songs and it just it, it took off and it just made me feel so fantastic yeah well and, a, uh, as we as we wrap up here I wanted to ask what is now that things are starting to lighten up uh, as mm-hmm. far as the whole pandemic thing what is the plan now I mean are you going back out on the road do we have any dates and what's gonna I mean obviously Dina Martin live was kind of the answer to us all being in lockdown and thank you so much for that but are you going to continue that you know what we have we have to see I, you know my agent called and said are you ready to go out and I said well you know I don't want to be the first <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know if you know Vegas has called and you know performing arts centers I said well you know I don't want to be uh, you know the guinea pig I don't I don't know I don't, you know I, I'm not sure but I will be ready and what we're going to be doing now is recording a lot of these songs you know there's I think we've done like 70 or uh, uh, new songs you know that Rick Creevy has written the you know new arrangements for so I'm going to record record those and of course you know working on the on the book but i'm i'm getting ready i would be happy to go out on the road you know there's nothing like uh, having people there this past weekend my publicist uh, got married in mm-hmm. nashville yes and he asked me if you know if i would come so john and i went we had not been out you know and so we went to nashville saturday on saturday uh, morning we flew to nashville and did the you know the next day we did the rehearsal fabulous band and i sang for them it was a beautiful beautiful wedding and and then we came back and but it was so much fun to get up on stage and sing for all of these you know a couple hundred people who were just so you know they laughed at my jokes of course and they would applaud you know standing ovation those are things i miss because i've got you know john and rosario going yay (laughs) (laughs) my my dream thing sometime would be have like a little guest spot in your show and have you do a song with Gary Lewis and Nancy Sinatra? Wouldn't that be great? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, I loved performing with Gary. In fact, you know, we did a show in Las Vegas. It was uh, and up on the, on, the, on the marquee. It said Martin and Lewis. <laughs> and you get closer, and it said, you know, a teeny little Dina <laughs> up over the Martin and a teeny little Gary over the other. And, uh, you know, we had... We had a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But that's uh, that's good. I don't know that Nancy wants to go out and sing anymore, you know, <laughs> but you know, but she's she's a doll. Right. Uh, well, you know, I grew up with the Sinatras. I, I wanna thank you so much, Dina. I, I promise we won't cry, but I, I want you to know it's emotional how, for us. How much we absolutely love you, absolutely love your father, love all of your uncles. And, even, and your even brother, when I, was, I was I was like the biggest Dino, Desi, and Billy fan. Even when I oh, was, they were so cute. Yes. Even when I you was know, a I re- kid, I remember one of their first gigs they were in Atlantic City on the boardwalk when they still had that horse that would jump off the <laughs> diving board. <laughs> <laughs> you know the memories, and yeah. Dean Paul 
was absolutely, of course I always called him Dino. Yeah. He was an abs- He was just unbelievable. You know what he did, and he was a fabulous tennis player. Yeah. And he was he was so cute, and he was a great pilot. I mean, he was everything that he wanted to do, a race car driver. Mm-hmm. He was amazing and a, just a, a, a good guy. Yeah. Yeah, you know, all my brothers and sisters. We all were brought up uh, the right way. And I was surprised to find out that one of the Martins married one of the Costellos. I mean, Martin and Lewis and Abba Costello got a merge. (laughs) Uh, There there you go. Oh, yeah, my brother Craig. Well, and and all of our listeners, please check out, uh, if you haven't already, Dina Martin Live. It's so much fun. It's every Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. And all the old shows are up in archive. All the old shows are in archive. You can catch it on YouTube, Facebook, or go to dinamartin.com. And also over at dinamartin.com is her CDs, her book, all of that kind of stuff. Grab it. You'll love it. Everything you do, Dina, is effortless and beautiful. And I thank you so much for being on the show today. God bless you. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for uh, thank you for inviting me. You guys are great. What a, a fun interview. You know, uh, thank heaven she didn't say, so what have you been doing? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So you're you know, still I, working? I, <laughs> I, I can just say, so you're yeah, still right. working? Yeah, a famous line <laughs> yeah. that came from uh, Jerry. All right, thank you so yeah. much, Dina. So thank you very much, and send me the address. I'll send the book. Thank Perfect, you. Thank, thank you. you. Have a great okay. rest of your weekend. All right. All right. All right. Thank you, you too. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.